So the hardest part about solo queue is that your teammates suck, right? <laughs> that's always the excuse. That's always the reasoning. And you know, honestly, chances are you're right. Maybe your teammates are just really dumb. <laughs> but there is a lot of different things that you can do to make this a lot easier on yourself. And it has a lot to do with this turtle right here. Okay? So this video is going to teach you how to be better at solo queue. It's going to teach you how to get the most out of your team. And the reason why Dreadnought is such a theme is because he literally makes your team better. Because if you kill Dreadnought, your whole team levels up. And to express how important that is, well, you know, we're going to break down piece by piece what you can do to make it so your team's better. But to express how much of a big deal that is, go ahead and take a look at the substitute doll here. Now take a look at the stats. I'm level 11. And I'm going to level up a couple times. The reason why I'm choosing level 11 is because it's not uncommon for one team to be around level 11 at the end of the game when Zapto spawns and the other team to be around level 13. So let's go ahead and get to level 13. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Now, that might just look like numbers to you, but let me explain how much of a difference that is. You have about 14% more health if you have a two level advantage and your defense is about 24% better, meaning you can have a lot more HP to work with, you can take a lot more hits, and what I'm not showing you here is you can also just do a lot more damage. Being able to level up your whole team is a really, really, really big deal in this game. <laughs> so let me go ahead and give you some tips on how to make it so that things that you do help your teammates figure out what they gotta do, okay? So step one to doing well in solo queue is picking a good Pokemon. So what does that mean? What's a good Pokemon? I think all the Pokemon in this game are pretty good at something. But we need one who's really good at being in lane. Don't pick a jungler. If you want to do well in solo queue, don't pick a jungler. Pick somebody who's really good in the top lane. All right? So for this video here, we're going to pick Lucario. But frankly, Cinderace might be good. Cramorant might be good. Pikachu, whoever. Somebody who's really good in the top lane. I like Lucario for a lot of reasons. So we're going to go ahead and pick Lucario. And I'm going to show you what you do from second one all the way to when we start dealing with Dreadnought. Because again, the whole theme of this is to level up your team so you can get that huge advantage at the end of the game. All right, so we're going to talk about why Lucario specifically is really good for it. But right away, straight out the gate, always go top lane. I don't care if you had two teammates that said, I'm going top lane, I want top lane, I claim it. If you're in solo queue, doesn't matter. You're taking top lane because you know what's going to happen? One of those two punks who claim top lane, they're going to go to the bottom lane because that's how you take top. You know that you can force that to happen more than you can force them to come down to the bottom lane come Dreadnought time, okay? So always, always, always go ahead and take top lane. Other things to know is you see this five Apom here and this three Crab, whatever he is, and these other Apoms, they spawn at 940 every game. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get levels in. Usually this is easier if you have two people, but they spawn at 940 every single time. So that means that you can go ahead and try to hustle on over here and get some steals in on their monkeys. Other things to know in terms of spawning is after these dudes are all cleared out, there's going to be an additional spawn right over here at nine minutes flat. And that's going to be an additional what crab? Yeah, go take out the crab. I can't remember what he's called. He's a crab. <laughs> so quickly take him out. And then at 850, that is when the bees spawn right in here. They will always spawn at 850. So if you're bumping around trying to get to a certain level, make sure you remember when these things spawn because you're competing with the enemy team to get the last hit on all of these different Pokemon here so you can level up. Now, a big thing for Lucario specifically is you want to be level five at least before Dreadnought spawns. Didn't I tell you to stop attacking me? <laughs> I did. So reason why you want to be level five is that's when Lucario gets his first big skill. And level 5 for Lucario is going to be Power Up Punch, personally. I like Power Up Punch because it does a ton of damage! It does a ton of damage to other Pokemon. It does a ton of damage to wild Pokemon. You're going to love using Power Up Punch on Lucario. So you can sit here and stick around in the top lane for a little bit. Try to duke back and forth. Maybe get an easy takedown on the enemy team if they extend too far. But what you need to be paying attention to after you mess around up here for a little bit is the timer again. Dreadnought spawns at seven minutes. I mean, so does Rotom, but Dreadnought always spawns at seven minutes. And you need to be making sure that you are cycling down to the bottom of the map 
at around seven minutes. And now this is why we go ahead and say we always go top lane. Reason being is you want to have a big advantage over at Dreadnought. Because if you're in the top lane, you know that you're going to go to the bottom lane to go help out with Dreadnought. You want to have a Pokemon advantage over the enemy team. If there's three or four of you down there, that's awesome. Especially if there's only two enemies in the bottom lane. Okay? So as soon as Dreadnought spawns, you are down there to go ahead and start beating the crap out of him. Now, it's solo queue, so you might be the only one <laughs> taking out Dreadnought here. Which is why you need to pick a Pokemon like Lucario who can actually solo Dreadnought. Now, ideally, your teammates are going to be like, oh, okay, well, let's go ahead and help out Lucario. And if they're not really understanding that, you can press minus on your controller here and then take this little green marker and then be like, hey, it's Dreadnought time. Hey, hey, it's Dreadnought time. Please, anybody, Dreadnought. Hey, Dreadnought. Hey, it's Dreadnought time. <laughs> you start doing that at around 730 because, again, he spawns at seven minutes. Start letting your team know that they need to do the objectives. And usually, if you do that, they will get the hint. And since you came from the top lane and rotated down, at least you're going to have three Pokemon down here that are going to help you deal with Dreadnought. If the other two stay in this lane, that's fine because Lucario can deal with Dreadnought on his own. And in fact, those two staying up there will help keep the enemy team from trying to steal Dreadnought from you. Ideally, your whole team comes down to help, but again, you need to rotate down from the top lane. Now, you might be wondering, well, aren't we just going to let them go ahead and push the top lane? My opinion is, who cares? <laughs> this whole game revolves around the end game. You have won and lost games over and over and over and over and over again because of this stupid bird that spawns in the middle of the map. The best way to secure the stupid bird is to make sure that you take out the enemy team comes Zapdos time. And the best way to take out the enemy team is to be over leveled. If you got a two level advantage on everybody on the enemy team, you're gonna win your team fights almost all the time. Unless, unless you have the absolute worst people on your team ever, you're gonna win if you have a level advantage. All right, and something to keep in mind with Dreadnought is after you take him out, Dreadnought will respawn two minutes after he dies. All right, so if you take him out at what? 450. That means the next Dreadnought is going to spawn at 250. So in theory, you can get about three Dreadnoughts per game. You want to secure every single one. Ideally, your teammates will help you out, but your biggest priority, in my opinion, when you're playing this game is to make sure you secure Dreadnought so that you can have a strong late game. So once Dreadnought's down, you can go ahead and try to take out the enemy team, make sure you keep farming, etc., etc. But frankly, if they push top lane on you, it doesn't matter. This whole game revolves around being over leveled at the end of the match. So anything you can do in solo queue to influence that is going to help you out a ton. So always start in the top lane and then rotate down when Dreadnought comes up. And then mark him. Be like, hey, hey, kill the turtle. We don't like turtles in this game. Kill the turtle. If you can do that, you're going to win the vast majority of your games. And now on the topic of Zapdos, Zapdos is going to be spawning here very shortly. Dreadnought and Rotom disappear come the two minute mark. When Zapdos shows up, Rotom and Dreadnought disappear. But there is still a way that you can use Rotom. So if you're not fighting over Dreadnought in the last couple of seconds up until Zapdos' spawn, you can take out Rotom right before two minute spawns, and then that will make it so that Rotom will start advancing on the enemy team. And now tip, see how he keeps going even after two minutes? Usually he would disappear. Now, typically, you'll have at least one of these zones gone in the top lane, especially if you've already been steamrolling the enemy team. So that will cause Rotom to keep pushing down this lane. And if Rotom can push all the way to the enemy goal, that basically gives you the same effect as Zapdos, where you can go and get a quick turn in. You can get, you know, what a goal and score 100 on them just using Rotom. You don't even need Zapdos. So that's going to pressure the enemy team to split up. And if they are split up, they are weaker in the center area. Again, this whole game revolves around Zapdos, and you want to be in the best position you can be. So being overleveled and then also splitting up the enemy team is a really good way to help secure a Zapdos. Now, on to why specifically I was talking about Lucario. So not only does Lucario do a ton of damage, I mean, look how much of a chunk he takes off of Zapdos. He does that with his power-up punch skill, but he also has an ult that is really, really, really good at dealing with Zapdos. So... Ideally, you've taken out the enemy team and you don't have to worry about it, but in the situation where Zapdos is being contested, 
you have an extremely powerful alt with Lucario here. And it has a really, really long reach. Take a look at the minimap and how far that thing reaches. Like, you can be all... Oh my lord. You can be all the way back here and it's going to hit Zapdos. So if you're in a situation where you need to snipe Zapdos from a distance, like you can't just get there in time. Here, I'll even show it to you. You can use your little Kamehameha wave to try and secure a steal at the end of Zapdos' health. So take a look at this. And I'm going to go over there real fast and see how that still hits him. Now, if you're a little bit closer, I think it would do more damage to him. But you can go ahead and get that final hit on Zapdos using Lucario at an extreme range. So Lucario is good at sniping, he's good at dealing damage, and he's good at dealing with Dreadnought. And now I keep talking about how big of a deal Zapdos is, right? Beating a dead horse with that. Everybody knows that Zapdos is a big deal. But you need to keep in mind that taking down Zapdos doesn't just mean punching him. <laughs> it also means that you don't let the enemy team take him down. So we were just talking about sniping using our ultimate skill here, right? Well, the enemy team's going to try to do the same thing. They're going to try to make it so that they can take out Zapdos. So not only do you need to be deciding, well, do I try to do damage? You also need to be considering keeping the enemy team from doing damage. So if you have two or three people, again, if you're in solo queue, you need to have Galaxy Brain and try to manage what they're doing. If you have two or three people that are already taking down Zapdos and they're doing a fine job, you don't necessarily have to go in there and help them do that. You can be way more useful if you're creating a perimeter. So if you took out the enemy team or they were split up and they're trying to rush down the middle here to try to get that quick snipe in, you know, try to patrol a little bit. Make it so that you're giving them a bunch of trouble. That's where Lucario is really nice because he can do a bunch of damage and ambush people. So don't let the enemy team get in. I mean, Mr. Mime's good for this because he can create walls that don't let the enemy team in. Snorlax is really good at doing that too with his big ol' shield that he uses. Don't let them get close to the bird. <laughs> you that's how you lose. That's how they get that last hit out of nowhere and everything you did the last eight minutes means nothing, right? Don't let them get close. So start patrolling. Don't let them come down the middle. Don't let them come in from up top. Don't let them come in from the bottom. Make sure you're trying to create a little shield or a little bubble around your team while they take out Zapdos for you. And one final tip to go ahead and help you deal with the end of the game here with Zapdos. You want to have your ultimate skill ready, <laughs> right? So things to know about your ultimate skill and its charge rate. It takes about 2 minutes and 15 seconds for your ultimate skill to charge from 0 to 100. If you're not doing anything. So, things you can do to make it charge faster. If you take out any Pokemon, it will go up by 4%. See that? Went from 24 to 28. Any Pokemon. That could be a 2 energy APOM, <laughs> and that could be Zapdos. It's always 4%. Another way to raise it up really quickly to make sure you're ready at the end of the game is if you turn in. If you turn in at all, it'll go up by 10%. See how it jumped from 41 to 51? You could turn in 50 energy, you could turn in one energy. It's always gonna go up by 10%. So, use those tactics if you wanna make sure that your Unite move is ready for the end of the game. And again, it takes about two minutes and 15 seconds from zero to 100 if you're not, hey, somebody followed on Twitch. We stream just about every single night on Twitch, by the way. We do viewer games for this game if you wanna join. <laughs> Links in the description. But again, consider like, let's say there's only three minutes left on the clock. Do you really wanna use your Unite move in a team fight right before Zapdos spawns? Probably not. You probably wanna save for it. But if you do have to use it because you don't want your whole team getting wiped, well then go ahead and try to use some of these tactics where you can get your Unite move charged back up really quickly. So this was just a couple of quick tips for solo queue. I guarantee you that if you follow what I gave you in this video, you're going to do way better, especially if you're at lower ranks. This is way more applicable to expert rank and great rank and beginner rank. People, you know, veteran, ultra, masters, they definitely understand those mechanics a lot better than people who are new to the game. But if you're in those lower ranks and you are extremely frustrated with people just not understanding how the game works, Try to take advantage of what you can do as a solo player. Try to leverage what you have. Use your markers. You know, rotate down from the top lane. Remember how you can recharge your Unite move. Remember how Rotom can work after two minutes. Make sure you get your Dreadnaws. <laughs> do stuff like that, and I guarantee you, your win rate's gonna skyrocket. So, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope this video helped you. We stream just about every single night on Twitch. Please consider subscribing if this video helped you and you want to see more tips for Pokemon Unite or whatever game we do around here. And with that, thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.